Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Tech and Art. Hope you guys doing good. Today I'm going to discuss about service principal name SPN. So I'm going to talk about in detail session about the SPN. Okay, so please be with me. Before starting the session, I would request to each and everyone who ever newly join on my channel, please like to subscribe and don't forget to share and press the bell icon. So whenever you press the bell icon, you will get the video of the latest updated video. Okay. And share to your others also please visit the channel playlist as ms sql dba more than 130 videos which can help you to day to day activities so let me start the session today to understanding the spn i have created a nice document to give you the exact overview about the spn okay so spn called the service principal names okay the service principal name SPN is a unique identifier for each services. So we must have an SPN for each SQL instances. In the case of multiple instances, we must register all the SPN. It is a mandatory step to SQL Server connection to use the Corbus auth authentication. Okay. So now we have a couple of things to understand here. We have two kinds of server authentication. So if you remember, whenever you install a SQL Server, okay so during the installation it is asking you whether which type of authentication you want to go the windows authentication or the mixed mode authentication so if you select the mixed mode authentication you will get you know the sql server logins all, uh, also and the windows authentication also okay so we will talk the, those things here so two types of authentication the windows authentication and sql server and window authentication so second option you will get when you select the mixed mode authentication during the installation okay now the point is what is this sql authentication and the windows authentication so we'll understand this two point so sql authentication we can create a sql login and provide the appropriate rights to the login and sql server handle the sql login authentication so whenever you will create a SQL Server logins, so you need to provide a password, okay, so that the user can access the SQL Server instance with the help of that password and SQL Server instance responsibility to manage the password protection and everything, right? Whatever the authentication that need to manage by SQL Server instance itself, okay? Now the picture came in a Windows authentication, okay? So we'll understand these things. So if you go with the windows authentication so we can use the windows domain account to add a sql server and connect with the windows authentication method so sql server does not handle the authentication part for a windows login account it passes the authentication to windows security support provider identifier sspi okay which is a component of operating system so if you are giving the authority to windows you can manage the password you can manage the authentication okay so in that case sql server responsibility is you know uh, there is no responsibility for sql server instance to manage the authentication for windows users okay so windows operating system will handle the authentication process based on their defined SSPI security support provider and uh, interface okay there is a um, interface called SSPI which is already a part of component operating system component okay now the point is how do I know whether my SQL server instance are using which type of you know authentication so if you use this command it will give you the three information like this okay so the Kerberos means it shows the connection using the Kerberos authentication. SQL means the SQL authentication and NTML it is the NTML authentication. So now the point is Windows having the two types of authentication. The well, the first is NTM, uh, NTLM and the second is Kerberos. So NTLM is quite old nowadays they are not using. It's a very old technology. Kerberos is a recent and we are using from couple of years actually and it's very reliable when you compare to ntml i am not going to inside what is the corvus authentication what is the ntml authentication and what is the benefits 
okay that we can uh, see in a later video corvus authentication is much reliable than antml that we can understand which in terms of handling the password in terms of handling the security whatever so it's a much reliable things okay so now we will understand the spn server service principal name spn okay so if we are saying the windows having the corvus and ntml op authentication only then what is the role of this spn so see if windows is using the corvus authentication then definitely a valid spn required okay service principal name is required so there is a dependency between the corvus and spn if you are using the corvus authentication spn should be there the valid spn should be there so based on this diagram we will understand here it will, it will give you the exact view if any windows user trying to access the sql server okay so it will come to the sspi what i told you the windows security support provide provider interface sspi okay it's come here the sspi what it will go uh, it will do uh, it will send to the uh, corvus if you are using the corvus authentication it will come to the or corvus authentication and corvus authentication will check whether the spn exist or not the valid spn exist or not if it is there if it is configured the spn it will pass the authentication successfully okay if it is not spn valid uh, is not configured it will give the message like invalid spn okay but here if you come here the sspi in terms of the corvus it will come to like this if we are not using the corvus then it will go come here in terms of ntlm it will come it will establish the connection based on the ntlm so we forget about this ntlm we will not talk the sspi will talk about only the, this in this session the corvus authentication so like this the flow chart is happening it will check the valid spn is there or not so there is a dependency when you are using the corvus authentication it will check the valid sspn is configured or not if it is not there it will throw the error it is there it will pass the connection successfully so makes clear now come to in details how the sspn is working so we need to see the very focus here uh, with the all the bullets point if you see the client machine gets the ip address and fully qualified domain name fqdn fully qualified domain name of sql server using the forward and reverse back, uh, lookup okay the client drives the generate the spn is a you know predefined format for sql server it is used format something like ms sql svc slash fqdn and port number okay so that's an example it submit a request to the domain controller with the spn parameter details it use windows api okay initialize the security context for this work the domain controller check the check for the spn if valid spn exists it is it issues a token and client machine submit the token to sql server for authentication purpose so basically internal process explain in a text whatever i discussed here so that internal things discussed here you can go and check this statement if there is an error so what will get what kind of error will get like this we will get okay so this will give you the exact overview how the spn is working okay now come to the you know prerequisites for the corvus authentication if you are using the corvus authentication definitely some prerequisites should be there so sql server meet the following prerequisites to the corvus authentication okay so sql server and client machine should be a part of domain okay very very important things we might use the multiple domains in an environment so we can still use the corvus authentication but the domain trust relationship sh should be there how many you got uh, sometimes the you know there is a trust trust issue and because of that uh, you know uh, connection is not established i have faced this kind of error also because of some trust it's throwing the error connection in hostel so this is also very very required things the service principal name spn should be registered successfully for the sql services once we start the services you you can look at entry the service principal name in the error logs you will get the error logs details 
the connection whether established or not so successfully SPN registered okay message something will come so this is the prerequisites SQL server clients machines should be part of domain okay now the point is what is the role for SPN for always on once we start using the always on we came to know across there is a things called SPN service principal name so what how the SPN is helping for the always on so basically if you come here so we use the SQL listener to connect the primary replica in a SQL server always on so we all aware to listening the you know replica we are using the listener in always on okay to listen the connection okay so we use a listener to connect the primary replica in SQL server always on so we should create a SPN for each availability group SQL listener it enables the Corbus authentication for the client connection so we should use the name SQL service account for all the availability group replica so we need to use the FQDN of SQL listener listener along with the listener port to configure the SPN for SQL server always on okay to configure the SP, SPN what need to require the listener uh, sorry the fully qualified domain name okay and the, along with the listener and then port number okay to set up a listener uh, the SPN how we can set up we can go with the manual approach also and we can use this command also so we can use hyphen L parameter with the set SPN command to list all the available SPN associated with the service account okay if you type this command just change the service account and domain fully qualified domain you will it will give you the details and manually you can configure a domain administrator can manually register the F SPN with the they will go to AD and they will register active directory and they will register from there or else you can uh, hit this command it will register manually okay with the help of this command okay so uh, this is all about for the SPN how it's working and uh, this diagram makes you clear how the authentication is happening in a windows side what is the Corbus authentication and NTLM that that I, I would request to you know uh, just read it some articles good articles about these two authentication NTLM uh, it's a quite old technology now no windows is avoiding to use this NTLM process the Corbus node is actually using to use the Corbus if you are running a multiple instance then definitely SPN should be required so why SPN came to in a cluster or uh, always on because we are having the multiple replica okay so SPN should be configured to authenticate uh, to establish the connection to the client okay so hope you got the points uh, you can keep it and uh, you can understand based on this diagram okay and we'll meet you so I will create one session to establish the you know creation of this all the SPN all and uh, configuring the always on everything I will I will upload I'm planning to establish one lab okay so in that lab I will go one by one create the always on then we'll create the you know configure the SPN then we will give you the exact overview uh, how it's happening so till then uh, just keep it mind based on this uh, lecture okay so uh, very soon we will meet you bye bye take care